I get a lot of questions on how I run my trail cameras 365 days a year without spending a small fortune on batteries. Well, solar is my answer. I run a lot of my cameras off of solar power. The solar panels charge my 12 volt batteries, which then powers my trail camera. Today, I'm hoping to show you what solar panels I use, how I configure them, and how I make this all work for me. There are many different types and brands of solar chargers, but this is what I have found has worked for me. I have been using the Thunderbolt 1.5 watt charger. I use a pair of them uh, combined with a 12 volt battery, and that has always been enough power and keeps that battery charged, even running my cameras on video mode. If any of you have ran trail cameras, you know it's almost impossible to run a trail camera through the really cold winter months uh, on video mode on alkaline batteries. It is almost impossible. You just cannot do it. Uh, so there are times when I run some cameras on lithium ions. They will survive the cold weather and will do okay on video mode. But the better option definitely is solar. It's hassle free. It just works day in and day out all year long for me. I'm going to show you now how I do this. I've been using the Thunderbolt 1.5 watt solar panels. Uh, I usually buy a pair of them. I have found in the past that two seems to be the right number. I'm just going by my experience that two 1.5 watt solar panels have been more than enough and not too much that it overcharges and damages your battery. I do not run any solar controller at all. I simply hook these two panels up through a diode and then hook it directly to the battery. I'm going to show you now what I get in this package. Inside the box you get a solar panel. You get two different cords, which one of these we will use. This one can get discarded. And it comes with suction cups that you would install this in a windshield of a car to keep your battery charged. Those can be discarded also. To prevent reverse flow at nighttime so it doesn't drain your battery, I install a diode on the positive line of the solar panels. You want to install this between the panel and the battery. You do not need to install anything between the battery and the trail camera. This little diode I get, I buy in packs of 10. Uh, I like to solder them in. I think you could probably crimp them and be okay. I like to solder them so that you have trouble free for years to come. I simply cut the existing cord right off the solar panels because I'm going to marry these two panels together and that way I can double my charge. I simply strip away the wires then so that I can solder in my diode and then I will connect solder these all back together with the diode in the positive line. Diodes, if you're not familiar, they have to be installed correctly for the electricity to flow one way, but yet preventing it to come back the other way. Uh, you have to install it with a little stripe towards the battery uh, and away from the solar panel. So your power will come in from your solar panel through that stripe towards your battery. That's the correct way to install them. I simply wrap my wires around the diode and then give a little bit of solder. Then I simply strip back the wire ends on the plug that I had originally cut off and solder that to the other end of the diode. Once you have all your connections soldered together, I use a little bit of electrical tape to cover up the connections. Once I taped up the connections, I simply used the provided clips that came with one of the solar panels and you can connect them together 
and your two solar panels will be married together and ready for a battery. Now to connect your trail camera to the battery, I simply use existing cords that you find laying around. Ask your relatives for chargers or whatever. Uh, this one was an automotive charger. Often a lot of electronics or appliances have the exact cord needed also. I simply cut off the end that's not needed. I will then attach this end to the provided clips from the second solar panel that we hadn't used yet. Whenever making this connection is very important to keep your polarity correct. These plugs, uh, the outside is negative, then they have an insulator, and then the inside is where your 12 volts should be. So you, if you're not sure which wire is which of your two wires, simply connect it to a battery, use a voltmeter, and test whether your power is on the outside collar or the inside. You definitely want the power on the inside. A mistake here will fry your camera instantly when you plug it in. It'll just burn up the circuit board inside. So that's a very important step. You need your 12 volts on the inside of your plug. This outside collar should be your negative. Once I'm sure of my polarity, uh, I simply attach these wires together, give them some solder, and you'll ha I'll have my plug that plugs into the trail camera. My other end will also attach to the battery. Now I tape these joints again with electrical tape and I'm good to go with that connection. You now have your two sets of plugs, one that came with each panel. One of them is connected to the two panels, that'll connect to your battery. Your other one will connect your battery to your trail camera. Next I want to touch on batteries that I use. These two happen to both be deep cycle batteries. This one is a 40 amp hour and this one's 150 amp hour. This one's actually an old golf cart batteries. That's something I've found works extremely well for me. You can often find these used and you can simply pay for the core charge. I have found old golf cart batteries, even though they're not strong enough to power the golf cart, if they can hold a charge and you're continuously charging them with your solar panel, it will last for years and years, even after their use in a golf cart. I have several of these going and they have been going for many, many years and I have zero problems. I have also have a standard car battery that is not deep cycle at all. It seems as long as I keep the constant charge from my two solar panels, I have no trouble even with a standard car battery lasting for many, many years trouble free. Another advantage of running solar and 12 volt batteries is you can dig out some of your old relic trail cameras. These old things took D batteries and were absolute battery hogs. Um, but with solar power and 12 volt batteries, these can become useful again. Like I had mentioned, I've been using these solar panels for many, many years now, and it's been through trial and error that I found what works for me. At one point, I was actually running three or four solar panels, running them through a solar control box and then to a battery. I found that controller used up some of the power and it was just an overkill. I did not need that. So I kept dropping back the panels. One would almost keep a battery charged, but depending on how many videos you were getting, it would just so lag behind. I found two was the perfect number to not only keep the battery charged, but not too much that it would overcharge your battery and damage it. Well, hopefully this gives you an idea of how I set up my solar panels to power my trail cameras. I'm sure I didn't cover it all, so feel free to, if you have any other questions to put them in the comments below. I'll try and answer them the best I know how. Uh, also, I'll put links down in the description of everything that I used here today, including the diodes, the solar panels, and such. Next, I'll take you out in the woods and actually show you some of my setups in action. This is my typical setup and what it looks like out here in the field. Uh, in this case, I'm over a small food plot and I have a post put in. The two solar panels are mounted to the top of that post on my angled mount. I have the trail camera mounted right on this post and then the battery just simply sitting on the ground at the bottom of the post. This particular setup has been my longest running one and my proven setup that I know it works. This has been here for either four or five years now straight. This camera has been running 365 days a year, have never, never moved it, have never 
recharge the battery, have never replaced this battery. This has been running for that many years straight. Uh, I've had probably close to 100,000 pictures on this uh, trail camera over that time frame. So it gets some pretty heavy use over the summer and spring. I'll put a mineral lick here in front of it so it gets a ton of pictures. This particular one does get full sunlight so it has like I said, has never had any trouble keeping after. I do have some that ha get less sunlight, and even with these two solar panels, I have never had trouble with those keeping after. So this has been a fairly simple, but a yet extremely effective setup for me. I have this setup here, and here, and here, and here. This setup works for me. I'm hoping this video inspires you to come up with something similar or do something that'll work in your situation. Uh, get those cameras out there and keep them rolling with full power.